Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're gonna be learning dance macabre. So first off, I just wanna give a big shout out to Evan for another brilliant arrangement and that performance like was jaw dropping, jaw dropping. I can never speak on these videos. But this is actually the second arrangement that Evan's done for us. So if you missed the first one, check it out. It was on St. James Infirmary, which is another tune with a haunting melody. So really, really cool. So this piece is actually one of my favorite classical pieces because it really invokes that Halloween spirit. So let me give you a little background on what inspired the music. So this is a symphonic poem that is based off the French superstition, Dance of Death, in which death appears at midnight every Halloween, calling forth the dead from their graves to dance for him while he plays his fiddle. So pretty cool background on this piece. Now, as you heard, it is quite a challenging arrangement, and as such, it is one that I'd recommend for the advanced player, but some of the best advice I ever heard was this. If you think an arrangement is beyond your current ability, give it a shot anyways because even if you don't learn the entire arrangement, you're gonna get better in the process. Now with that said, I wouldn't attempt this if you're a beginner, but if you're at the season intermediate level, then definitely give it a shot. There's so much in it that you can pull from it in terms of technique, in terms of dexterity building, in terms of dynamics. It's just an absolute brilliant arrangement. So let's talk about this lesson. So this lesson is actually going to be part one, and in part one, we're going to learn the first half of this tune. So if you guys want to learn the second half, we're going to be covering it in the part two lesson at rockclass101.com. So you can click this link right here, or go to the site and do a search for Dance Macabre. Now on that page, you'll also be able to find the tabs that you can print off and follow along with as a PDF format and access the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a really great asset in getting a tricky tune like this down that much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning it. But before we do, a couple things I wanna point out real quick. First off, we're gonna be counting out the rhythms as we go along throughout this. So if you're new to understanding rhythmic notation or you need a refresh, check out this lesson. And secondly, this song was written, or this arrangement was written in six, eight. So that means we're gonna be counting one, two, three, four, five, six, next measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, next measure, and so forth. And here's the thing that's really interesting with how we're gonna count it. So let's take a look at the first bar. I'm gonna put it right here. You can see the rhythm is a quarter note followed by an eighth note, and then again for the second half, it's the same, quarter followed by an eighth. We're actually gonna be counting the rhythms as if they were twice the value. So anytime you see a quarter note, we're gonna count it as if it was a half note. Anytime you see an eighth note, we're gonna count it as if it was a quarter note. And it goes on and on. So anytime you see a 16th note, we would count it as if it was an eighth note. So if we look at this first bar, which sounds like this. So you have ba, ba, da, da. So we're gonna count that as one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have half followed by a quarter, and then again, half followed by quarter. So essentially just doubling what you see up there. And that carries throughout the entire piece. All right, so let's jump into learning the intro. So we're gonna be learning intro, theme one, theme two in this lesson. And each of these pieces, all three of them, are four bars in length. So here's what the intro sounds like, and then we'll break it down and learn it. So really, really cool thing. One thing I want to add too, and this was a big uh, point that I learned when I was in music college, was to listen to the original performance and Evan's uh, cover of the, or his arrangement. His, listen, start that again. Listen to the original performance plus his performance. And that's going to help you really ingrain this piece into your memory. So if you haven't heard the song, 
too much, then really, really listen to it. Put it on repeat multiple times a day, and it really helps you get the piece of music memorized up here. Because if you have it up here, it's much easier to translate it to the instrument. All right, so let's break down just that first bar. So again, the first bar is ba, da, da, da. There's only four hits, and remember we're going one, two, three, four, five, six. So this piece starts with a tritone. So it's gonna be our middle finger on five on string two, ring on six on string one. And we can just pluck this. Now for our right hand technique, this piece for, for the intro is going to be basically plucking out of a three finger approach. So that means that your thumb would get string four and string three, index would get string two, and middle would get string one. But when we jump into theme one and theme two, then we're gonna switch into using piccato technique, which is alternating between middle finger and index. And you can see if I play just the first string, see how I'm just alternating between those two. And that carries on through. So if you had string skipping, going from first string, second string, then you keep carrying, carrying on with that. Second, first, second, first, second, first, throughout all that. If this is a new technique for you, I'd encourage you to check out La Hitanita, which is a lesson on a flamenco tune, but I broke down that technique in complete detail. And there's also a four finger strum roll that we're gonna use for that last hit. And that is also taught in that lesson as well. So if you wanna learn the mechanics behind this technique, then, or techniques, check out that lesson. All right, so let's jump back into the intro. So we're starting off with that tritone. Again, it's fifth fret and sixth fret for string two and one. So we're gonna pluck that and remember that rhythm. So we're plucking it twice, but the first hit lasts longer. So you have one, two, three. Okay, so you have hit on one and three. One, two, three. And then from here, we're going to play out of this D, but we only need one finger for right now. So that's gonna be the middle finger on the second fret of string three, plus the open A. And again, same rhythm, so we're hitting it twice, first hit lasts longer. So that rhythm is four, five, six. So we hit on one, three, four, six. So together you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's kind of cool to put a little bit of vibrato into there. Gives it a little bit more character. If you're new to vibrato, I'll put a link to a lesson that really goes super in depth in the description box below. So let's see if we can try bar one together, you and I. Here we go. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. And if I go too fast at any point throughout this lesson, here are the instructions for slowing down the YouTube player. So you can play it at 75, 50% speed, whatever uh, is a better speed for you for right now. All right, so here's bar number two. So you can hear it's very similar to the first bar, just slight very variation in the first half. Ba, da, 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 da. So this rhythm is going to be hitting on one, hitting on the end of two, and hitting on three for the first half. So you have one and two and three. So hit it again, the end of two, one and two and three. So that's gonna be all out of the tritone. So you have one and two and three. But the attack is gonna be a bit different. So if you notice the first hit I'm gonna pluck so for one and two, on the end of two, I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna use the nail of my thumb, and it's okay if you hit string one or string two together, it doesn't really matter, as long as you hit on the end of two. So one and two, end. So I'm just gonna come up with the nail of my thumb, kind of like an up strum, and then I'm gonna come down with the nail of my second and third, and strum those two strings on beat three. So I have one and two and three, okay? Now for the second half, it's actually identical to the first bar. So you have four, five, six. So same two hits. So really the right hand is the important thing with this second bar. So we have one and two and three. Okay, so let's just try that first half, hitting on one, end of two, and three. Four, five, six. One and two and three. 
Okay, now let's see if we can add the second half to it. Four, five, six. One and two and three, four, five, six. Nice, now let's backtrack. Let's do one and two together. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One and two and three, four, five, six. Okay, let's take a look at bar number three. Sounds like this. So quick rhythms at the start, right? Da 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 da. So that rhythm is one and two, three, four and five, six. So you notice the first half identical to the second half. So let's break down what's happening. So for this time around, our right hand is going to go down, up, down, pluck. That's gonna be the pattern that we're gonna follow. So it's kind of like the strum of just those two strings. So I'm going down, up, down, and then pluck. Okay? So give that a shot real quick, but we wanna put that into the rhythmic time frame. So we have one and two, three. Okay, so again, it's one and two, three. So I'm going down, up, down, pluck. You can notice too that, take a look at this index finger. This index finger is touching string three, just touching it as if it was muting it. So in case my strum goes too far, and I, oops, that was horrible. Let me try again. In case my strum goes too far, and I hit string three on accident, it's gonna mute string three, and only let me hear the ones that I wanna hear, string two and one. So if you're new to doing uh, muting the other strings, it's really good practice for cleaning up your playing, which is a big thing, especially if you plug in. So if you uh, play through an amplifier or you're recording uh, direct, kind of like how I'm plugged in right now, then it is uh, a big thing to really clean up your playing is to mute the strings you don't want to hear. So let's see if we can try this one together. We have one and two, three, okay? So we'll try the first half, and the second half is the same thing, so we're actually do doubling it. But let's try one time first. Four, five, six. One and two, three. Okay, so let's try two times in a row. Four, five, six. One and two, three. Four and five, six. Awesome. Now let's take a look at the fourth bar. Sounds like this. That last hit is going to be the first beat of theme number one, but it kind of ends that phrase. So we're gonna include it in this little section right here. You can hear the rhythm was all even, right? It's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, boom. Okay, so let's break down what's happening. So essentially all we're doing is bouncing between tritone and plucking the D. So in reality, all we're gonna be doing is going one, two, three, four, five, and then when we get to beat six, we're gonna switch into this D1. So it's actually just a double of two D notes. So it's an octave. So that's gonna be your index on the second fret of string three, and your pinky on the fifth fret of string one. You pluck both those strings together. And then from there, we're going up to this G minor. We can do that little raschiato technique, that four finger strum roll, where it's pinky ring second index. It gives it a big pronounced sound to end it. So that's a really cool thing you can do. Again, if you're new to that technique, you can learn the mechanics behind it in the lesson La Gitanita, spelled G-I-T-A-N-I-T-A. -I -I -T -T the, uh, the link is in the description box below. So again, we wanna remember on the six hit, we switch and then we resolve on G minor. Now it's important to note that Evan liked to play this G minor very difficultly. He liked to take his middle finger, as you see in the, uh, the chord diagram that I wrote. Like that, it's so hard. Seven, seven, six, ten. Which is, um, I don't know, I can't, I can't really grab that chord. It's, it's insane that he grabs it and, and plays it so cleanly. So I would suggest to form this chord in an easier fashion. Here's how I would play it. Take your middle finger, put it on the seventh fret of string three, index on the sixth fret of string two, pinky on the 10th fret of string one, and the G string will be open. 
Okay, that is much easier fingertip for all three fingers than to do what he's doing with this partial bar with the middle, which is very hard. You can do it if you want, he did it. And if he can do it, you can do it. Uh, but I find it really difficult and uncomfortable. So I simplified it. So let's see if we can try that entire bar together and let's see if we can resolve on this G minor. Uh, one thing that you may wanna to practice too is just the chord switch from the last hit, beat six, to the G minor. You can see the easy way to do it is to literally just slide up. Watch that pinky goes up to 10 and the index finger goes up to six, but while the index finger moves up, the index finger drops down a string and the middle comes down for seven. So that's the easy way to transition. Okay, so let's try that entire bar together. Remember we have one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So here we go, four, five, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Awesome, now let's backtrack. Let's try three and four together. So here we go. Four, five, six. One and two, three, four and five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Awesome. Now let's backtrack the entire intro. So here we go, all four bars. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five. Six, one, and two, three, four, and five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Nice. So here's the big takeaway though with this intro. It's really about how you play. It's not just playing the notes as you heard, as we just went through. We went through it kind of like, uh, <laughs> kind of like how Ben Stein would talk, right? Hello, how are you? Ferris, Ferris, right? So it's really about how you play it. That's why dynamics play such a big part of this feel of this tune, right? So for example, we can play some notes lighter, some notes we can play stronger, so we can accent some stuff. So for example, if you were to play you can just hear in the way that I sang it out, some were quieter, some were accented louder. So take it and pull little elements from that, but make it your own because the interpretation of the music is always up to the performer, which is you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into theme number one. First thing I wanna talk a little bit about again was that right hand approach. Remember, we're gonna be doing the piccato, which was the technique taught in La Hitanita. So that link is in the description box below. Uh, essentially, we're gonna be alternate picking second first, second first for all these fast melody notes that are happening. But every now and then I break out of that piccato technique and I use my thumb to play string three. So whatever note is on string three, most of the time I'm gonna use my thumb. I think that's the easiest way for me. Uh, but again, the way that you wanna play this revolves around your playing style. And if you watch Evan, you can see that he doesn't do that technique. So this is what fits my playing style. So I just wanna throw it out there. So that's what I'm gonna be using. So let me go ahead and play uh, just the first couple bars of theme one. So it's gonna be starting out of this G minor down here, the stock G minor. And here's what it sounds like. Okay, so we gotta remember that that first hit, of the G minor is beat one for theme number one. So if I count out the rhythm, I have one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and... So there's just bar number one. And the demo, I played both bars. So that one, we just wanna really keep in mind that that is beat one. So we can see with the rhythm uh, that it's literally just gonna be one, two and three and four and five and six and. So the rest are just eighth notes. So you have one, two and three and four and five and six and. So the rest are just straight eighth note rhythm throughout. So every note lasts the same length of time. So let's break down the chord. We're playing out of the basic G minor. So I'm assuming everyone knows it. I'll put the chord right up there if you don't. 
But for this one, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and start with a strum. I'm just gonna use my index finger. I'm gonna strum four to two because the melody note is string two. So I really wanna accent string two. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna play string one. So I've got strum, string one, and then string two again, and then lift the index finger up and play the open A. So I've got strum one, two, open A. And that gives me the first half. So we have to remember one, two, and three, and... Okay, so let's practice starting on beat two. So we have four, five, six, one, two, and three, and... Okay, now for our second half, we're gonna put that index finger back down on that first fret. We're gonna pluck string one and two together, and then play string three. So here's where I like to use the thumb. So again, I'm plucking one and two together, then string three. Lift again the index, play the open A, put it back down, play the first fret, play string two, and then string one. So together for that second half, you have pluck three, open A, first fret, string two, back to string one. So if I call out the hits, I have pluck three, one, one, two, one. Let me call out a little slower. Pluck three, one, one, two, one. It's real important to not, uh, or to pay attention to when that finger lifts up for the open A. So let's see if we can try the second half. So we start on beat four. Two and three and four and five and six and... Okay, and if we put that entire bar together, and one thing again you wanna practice is that transition. Okay, so you have... So for that one, again the same concept applies, so that middle finger is gonna slide from the seventh fret down to the second, and then your ring comes down. So watch the other two fingers. They lift up as I move down, and the ring comes down. So that's gonna be the easiest way to transition from that higher G minor to the lower. So let's try that entire bar slowly. Four, five, six, one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and maybe a little slower. Four, and five and six and one, two and three and four and five and six and... Okay, now for our second bar, we're going to be having a really quick hit for the first beat, and then it goes back pretty much predominantly into the eighth note runs. So here's what the second bar sounds like. So you have this quick little hammer on pull off before it goes into uh, basically the same kind of eighth note run. Real cool sounding stuff. So straight out of that G minor still, you can see that you start with the index finger lifted up and we're gonna do a hammer on pull off, O, one, O, all on the first string. Okay, after that, we're gonna play string two, put the index back down, play the first string, then play string two, and then play the first string open. So it's gotta come up again. So you watch this first finger, so I'm gonna go O, one, O, three, one, three, open A. So I was calling out frets for that one. So if I call it strings, two, one, two, one. Okay, so O, one, O, two, one, two, open. That's our first half. This rhythm, if I count it, it's gonna be one, two, and three, and. So this first happens on beat one, the pull off happens on the end of one, and then two, and three, and. Okay, so we have one, two, and three, and. So it's easier for me just to count it as one, but note that two notes fit into the first beat. One, two, and three, and. Okay, so let's give that a shot slow. Four, and five, and six, and one, two, and three, and. 
Okay, so for the second half, we're gonna start with putting the index back down. We're gonna pluck first string and second string together, then play string three, lift the index up, play the open A, put it back down, play first string, and then second string. And that last note will last a quarter hit. So you have four and five and six. So you've got pluck, three, O, oh, first, second string. Okay, let's give that one a shot. One, and two, and three, and pluck, and five, and six. Okay, if we try that entire bar together, four, and five, and six, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. Awesome. Now let's see if we can backtrack and let's try bar one and bar two together. So remember we're starting on the higher G minor. Here we go. Four and five and six and one, two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. Very nice. Now let's take a look at what happens next. So we're done with G minor, we're going into F minor. So think of your basic E minor, that staircase shape. Move it up a half step, it becomes F minor. So if you're new to taking chord shapes uh, that you play at the beginning of the neck and you wanna learn how to move them up so they become other chords but are based out of that shape, then check out the caged method. I'm gonna link that lesson below. Really, really useful stuff for breaking away from playing only in the beginning of the neck. So again, we're gonna make this F minor chord and I'll put the chord uh, right there for the chord graph. So we wanna ignore string four. So we're just gonna play string three down. But here is what these two bars sound like. These are the last two bars of theme one. Okay, so as you can hear, this one is a bit of a finger frenzy and a bit of a challenge for the pinky finger. So let's dive into what's happening. So first thing, let's go ahead and make that F minor chord with the staircase. And we wanna note that the rhythm is straight A throughout all of this. So every note lasts the same amount of time for this first bar. So the first bar is... Okay. So we're gonna start off with plucking three and two together. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a walk down pluck. So we're gonna go three, two, one, and then back to string two, and then use the pinky for the sixth fret of string two. Okay, so that gives us our first half. So we have pluck, three, two, one, two, two. And the sixth fret is our last note. So let's see if we can try that one together. Four and five and six and one and two and three and... Okay, and a little slower. Four and five and six and one and two and three and... Okay, from here, we're going to start with a pluck again, but this time string two and one. So we pluck those two strings and then we start again with this little walk down, but this time around, we're going to go string three, put the pinky back down for the sixth fret, and then play string one, lift the pinky up, play string two, and string one again. So you have pluck on one and two, three, six, three, lift up, four, three. Okay, so if I call it strings, I have pluck, three, two, one, two, one. All right, so let's give that second half a shot. Two and three and one and two and three and. Awesome, and the entire bar. Four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and. Okay. Let's take a look at the second bar, and it sounds like this. I'll play it slow, and it's got this really tricky slide in the first part. Okay, so it sounds like this. All 
twice. So let's break down what's happening. Here's the cool thing is that, remember when we did that little hammer on pull off, it's the same rhythm. So we're gonna fit this one end. So that first two notes fit into beat one. When you slide back, it's on the end of one. And then when we start picking out of it, two and three and it starts on beat two. So for this, we're gonna take that pinky, we're gonna go six to eight, very quick. So one and, so slide up and slide back down, then back into the chord shape, and we're gonna play string two, string one, string two, and then back to six on string two. Okay, so you notice that when I'm doing this, I can actually lift the ring finger up because I don't really need it for the first half of this bar. It's not until I get to the second half that I need to put it back down. Okay, so the first half again, we have six to eight and slide back, but fast on the first one. And we're gonna hold that third note out a little bit longer. Whoops. Okay, so we have one and two and three and... So real slow together, four and five and six and one and two and three and okay from here lift that pinky up you're gonna pluck string one and two together put the ring back down play string three put the pinky back down play string two play string one play string two lift the pinky up play string two so for the second half we have pluck three two one two two so let's try that second half together so remember we don't add the ring until the end of four so we have two and three and four and five and six and okay and if we try the entire bar we have four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and awesome now let's backtrack let's try bar three and four together here we go four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six Let's try all of theme one together. So starting on G minor, going to F, but actually starting on the higher G minor. Four and five and six and one, two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. One and two and three and four and five and six and Awesome. So as you notice, there's so many notes that the best way that I would recommend to practice is just to go bar by bar and then two bars at a time, just like we're learning it and piece that together, start slow and build the speed from there. Now let's take a look at theme number two. So theme number two, again, is going to be playing out of G minor to F minor. So if you have a uh, soprano ukulele, you can double what we just did. You can play G minor to F minor here. But a cool contrast is to start playing it up higher on the neck, which just it sounds really awesome. It was a great idea from Evan. So here's what it sounds like uh, for the first two bars, and then we'll break it down and learn it. So a really cool um, movement going up higher. So again, you want to practice the going to the higher. So it's really a G5, this first hit. So we're gonna use the first and the second finger to grab this, because as we move up to this higher G minor right here, it's gonna be really, well, we have to use our index finger flat. So you can see when you move up, the index finger just naturally goes into that flat position for the 10th fret. So for this G5, we're just gonna use the index and the middle finger. So again, that's open, second, 
third, ignoring string one. Then we go up to flat on the 10th fret and we can use our index finger for this higher G minor. So again, you just want to practice that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put it, in, put it into a time frame and makes it, uh, it gives you a structured practice for that chord transition. So again, here's what the first bar sounds like. And I started on beat two, right? So again, this is beat one. One, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and... So you hear pretty much all eighth notes other than the first eight. One, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and... So let's break it down starting on beat two. So we're gonna start with a strum. We can do a little Ross Gallo strum if you want, or just a regular strum, doesn't matter. From there, we're gonna take the pinky, put it on 13 on string one, lift it up, play the 10th fret again, and then the 12th fret of string one. And we'll use our ring finger. So we have strum 13, 10, 12. So all on string one. So together it sounds like. Okay. So let's see if you and I can try that. And we can add that first hit. So here we go. Four, five, six, one, two, and three, and. Let's slow it down a little bit. Four and five and six and one, two and three and... Okay, so the second half is gonna start on 13. So we're gonna play that on string one, then we're gonna play string three, and then we're gonna play the 12th fret plus the second string together. So remember that's barred, so you're playing 10 and 12. After that, you're back to 13, then 10, and then 13. It's pretty much all on the first string. So again, for our second half, we have 13, 10 on string three, 12 plus the pluck of string two, 13, 10, 13. Okay, so for our second half, we have four and five and six and. So let's see if we can try that one together. Two and three and. Four and five and six and. Okay, and the entire bar. Four and five and six and one, two and three and four and five and six and. Awesome. Now our second bar sounds like this. All right, so let's break that one down. So we're gonna start with the ring finger down on the 12th fret. We're gonna pluck this one. We're gonna pluck all three strings and then we're gonna do a hammer on pull off. It's got that same rhythm where it's one end. So you have hammer on on beat one and then the pull off on the end of one. Okay, so it's 12 to 13 to 12, but with the pinky. And don't forget to pluck and sustain as you do. After that, you're gonna play the 10 13, 10, 12, all on string one. So we have 10, 13, 10, 12. Okay, so let's see if we can try that one together. Four and five and six and one and two and three and. Okay, now for our second half, we're gonna put the pinky back down. We're gonna play 10 plus 13 together, so string one and two. Then string three, lift the pinky up, we'll play the 12th fret plus the second string, and then back to 13, and then lift up all and back to 10. So the second half is a little tricky, and that last note is a quarter. So we have four and five and six. So together you have four and five and six. Okay, so again, it starts pluck 10 and 13, then string three, pluck 10 and 12, then 13, 10. So the rhythm, four and five and six. So let's try the second half together. Two and three and four and five and six. Okay. Now, if we try the entire bar together, we have this four 
and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. Okay, now if we backtrack, let's try one and two together. So starting from G right here, four, five, six, one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. It's really hard because you also have to sustain the finger strength of that partial bar. So across all three strings. So you want to try and let that sustain and ring out to make it sound a little bit fuller and a bit prettier for the harmony. Now this last chord, this higher F minor, this is the hardest part of the entire arrangement. And if you have a tenor, it's way easier to play. But if you have a concert like me, the frets are so tiny that it makes it very difficult to clean your playing up. So for those people that have concerts, I feel your pain on this part coming up. But let's try our best to get through it. And here's what it sounds like. All right, so let's go ahead and break it down. So the first thing is to get the chord shape down. So it's actually the same shape as G minor. We just moved it up the neck. So remember that caged method I linked down? It covers how we can take these basic chord shapes and play them higher up the neck to create other chords. Then definitely check that out if it's a new concept for you. But going up this high, we're gonna be on the 12th fret with our middle finger, string three. Ring is on 13 on string two, index is 11 on string one, again, ignoring string four. So we have three, two, and first string. So 12, 13, 11. So let's go ahead and form the chord and we're gonna start with the first half of the first bar. So again, the first bar sounds like this, played slowly. Okay, so a lot's happening. So let's break it down slowly. So we're gonna start with plucking one and two, and then playing string three. And then again, one and two, and then use your pinky to play 15 on string one. And then lift that pinky up, play first string, which is 11, and then use your pinky to play 13. So you're already noticing that pinky is going to play 15 and 13. So the movement is in the pinky finger. So again, we have pluck, three, pluck, 15, 11, 13. So again, the melody is predominantly on string one as well. So let's try that first half. Four and five and six and pluck, three, pluck, 15, 11, 13. Okay, now our second half, we're gonna move the pinky back up to the 15th fret. We're gonna pluck one and two again, then play string three, and then lift the pinky up and move the pinky to the 13th fret and pluck one and two again. Okay, so that first, second half started with it on 15. So we pluck one and two, string three, move it to 13, pluck one and two, and then move it back to 15, pluck string one by itself. After this, this is really important. We're gonna lift these three fingers up. We're gonna play 11 and then 15 with the ring finger. Okay, so we're switching out of playing from that chord. This is exactly what Evan did as well to gain that speed. So again, we're gonna pluck for the second half, 15 and 13, string three, 13 and 13, back to 15, lift these three fingers up, play 11, and then 15. And this whole time we have that eighth note rhythm. So if I count out the rhythm, I have four and five and six and Okay, so let's try that second half together. Two and three and four and five and six and. Okay, if we try the entire bar, four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and. So all eighth note throughout that entire bar. Now here's what the last bar for theme two sounds like.
Okay, so for this one, remember we broke out of that chord shape. So our index is still anchored on 11. So for that first hit, we wanna remember that we have two hits on one and then the pull off on the end of one. So that's gonna be 13 to 15 and then pull off to 13, okay? You can see I'm using my middle for 13, ring for 15. So hammer on, pull off. After that, I'm gonna play 11, back to 15, back to 11, and then back to 13. So I'm only using these three fingers. So together I have one and two and three and. Okay, so again, hammer on, pull off, and then 11, 15, 11, 13. Let's give that one a shot. Four and five and six and one and two and three and. Okay, now our second half is gonna start with a quarter, so we have four, five, and six and. So this one is our last chord we have to learn, an F5, so we're going to use our index for 12 on string three, middle for 13 on string two, pinkies on 15 on string one. So we're gonna pluck all three strings, and then from here we're gonna use the ring to play 13 on string one, back to 15 with pinky, lift it up, back to 13, so your ring stays anchored, and then use your index finger to play 11. I like to do this bar because this last hit is the first hit of theme number three, kind of ends that phrase, and that's gonna resolve on the G minor. So that second half we have four, five, and six, and one. Okay, so it starts with the F5, pluck, 13, 15, 13, 11, and then pluck the G minor. So you can see that when I go to here, I'm not gonna use my fingertip. He uses his fingertip. I don't think it's very convenient for me, for my playing style. So I'm just gonna pretend as if I'm barring on 11, just to prepare for barring on 10 for the last hit. That's easier for me. So let's try that second half. Two and three and four, five and six and one. Okay, and remember that's G minor is the first hit of theme three. So let's put that entire bar together. Four and five and six and one and two and three and four, five and six and one. Nice. Now let's try the last two bars for F minor together. Four and five and six, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and one, and two, and three, and four, five, and six, and one. Awesome, and if we try all four bars for theme two, this is what we get. Four, and five, and six, and one. Two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four. Five and six and one. All right guys, so that covers everything for the first half of this lesson. So if you guys wanna learn the second half, we're gonna be covering that in the part two lesson at rockclass101.com. So you can click this link right here to check out the entire lesson, as well as get the tabs that you can print off and follow along with. Very, very helpful for this lesson. There's just so many notes that we're playing and even more helpful is the on-screen tab viewer, so that interactive tab player where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down to any speed that you, that you need. You can work on half a bar at a time. It's just super, super useful and beneficial for a lesson that is this tricky and this difficult. So all that is gonna be at that page, guys, or you can go to the site and do a search for Dance Macabre.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Evan did a killer job on it, so beautiful playing. If you want to watch another one of his lessons, there's a link in the YouTube description box below for St. James Infirmary, another haunting melody. And again, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys in the part two lesson. Take care. Bye.